Hello and welcome back to Vampire. So we are further investigating the blackmail plot. And this time we gotta go toward the chapel to find Richard, uh, Dieter Cott and Clayton Darby. Hmm. And also I'm looking for possible parts to upgrade my club. Oi mate. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming <laughs> Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I thought, my son. I'm also a vampire. <laughs> Okay, your life in London. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Why don't li why you don't like nurses? Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. I see. So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fiber. Is killing this guy considered bad? I'm more lost than you thought? <laughs> what do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. I only believe in facts. Also, if this guy can't tell that I'm a vampire, how the hell do the tux uh, tell that I'm a vampire? Would they just attack anybody? I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. Maybe it's the torch that they just uh, bring close to me and they just see like, oh yeah, this is a vampire. I got burned by the torch. What do you mean when you- Oh, sorry. Quite a job. you? I'm listening? Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of the decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. <sighs> I have heard enough. I have heard enough. Goodbye. Actually, we need to... Good evening, Mr. Whitaker. It's Father Whitaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? I'm gonna murder you on the spot. Have you any family left? I hope not. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Where did you send him? Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery, where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. Oh, so you sent him to die? You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic? As a true believer. Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Okay. 
I have had enough for tonight. Goodbye. What a guy. So... We need to find Clayton Darby in this area, apparently. Is he inside? in the arena. Are you Richard? Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions. Please be my guest. Although I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town, my words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? So nonsense. Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Oh, well, never mind that. Nithercott, at your service. I thought you were some other religious nut, not too. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. Darius Petrescu? Dorothy Crane? I'm looking for Dorothy Crane, a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But sorry, no, never heard of her. Really? What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, but his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require mediocre writing skills. I see. Yeah, you're in danger here, mate. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. He has a cold. So if I heal him up, <laughs> we get more XP for killing him. But I don't really want to kill him. It is somewhat risky around here. I understand your need for solitude, but it's not safe around here. I don't care. I don't have many friends, Doctor, and my family despises me. Ah. Who will help you if you're in danger? If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear Doctor. Great. What are you doing here at night? May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. You should avoid exposure. If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the Seeker of Truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. 
But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. I see. What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet, nowhere to be found. And now, listen to this oddly peaceful silence. Yeah. Quite a unique point of view. Yes. The enjoyable silence of the grave. You have a unique perspective on the situation, I must admit. Most people fail to understand my perspective. I don't blame them. But how could I call myself a poet if I veiled my feelings? Why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? Tell me, Mr. Nethercott. Why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Do you not think it's a little morbid? Do you not think it a little morbid? Mm. On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like my dear muse, the wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. I see. But the various Camellia. You don't know her? And have you ever tried to learn more about her? Where she lives? How she survives? Whom she may know. Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? Yeah. Afraid to find the truth about her? Uh, I think he's not. Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But ah, uh, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? Like Guess not. Wait, what examples? Tell me. The place... In what way, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles, and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about, and that's what Whitechapel is made of. I see. May I ask you a few questions about the district? Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish. Not interested. Darius. Okay. I'll leave you a. Obviously, no new information right there. So we can go back and talk to Clayton Darby. Oh. The fact that the place is uh, always dark. Um. It's not the best. Like, of course, it makes 1% sense, but still. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. This I know what hard. you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. It reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. She can talk. I know you understand me. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Okay. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. Tell me about Richard Nithercott. 
I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. Ah. Very well. Goodbye, then. Great. What a lovely conversation we had. At least I find Camellia. Lure bouquet. Oh, new hint? What kind of hint? Camella. Camellia secretly distributes medical vouchers for Dorothy Crane's dis dispensary. Wow, we get 5,000 XP for killing her? That's a bit much. She's healthy. Hello again, miss. I know you work for Nurse Crane. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Oh, come on! Mm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Very well. Goodbye then. Oh, whoa! Okay. Can't go in there. It's locked. Can't Stay at home. Pay me a glass and I'll be gentle. Pay me a bottle and I'll be nasty. Oh, finally! What? What's up with the loading? Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina do for you? I'm not looking for what you're selling. What? But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick. Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. Huh. Okay. Um... Uh, Dorothy Crane? Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane? from the Pembroke Hospital. Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. I see. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed. Or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. What about your client's health? You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? <laughs> if you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. I see. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. I don't, I don't judge you. You should try to find another job. Well, that's true, I, I suppose, especially in times like this. But, like, that's easy to say. Obviously, she's... This was not the first thing she tried. That was your decision. Sell your body. But that's kind of like saying...
but she had much of a choice. <clears throat> I don't judge you. Well, that's that's a given, but I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Can we just hire her as a nurse? Goodbye, she seems to be pretty driven. Take care of yourself as best you can. We need nurses. Okay. Are you the person I'm looking for? Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Your investigation in London? I'm a bit of an investigator myself, but I have to say I'm really bad at it. <laughs> no newspapers speak about the epidemic? No jobs for migrants around here? Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divided nation. Do you think things will ever change, Mr. Darby? I believe the situation can only improve. And now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change. I see. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? It's not a simple epidemic. I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? <sighs> to be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My God, what happened to them? No newspapers speak about the epidemic? Which one? Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. People are left to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. You risk your life to reveal the truth? So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Okay. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. I see. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I care about public health. I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives? He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel. 
talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Why did you ask that, Jonathan? He never goes out. No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. <laughs> Maybe he changed his mind. Do we have enough information? Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Find the mailbox and the letter. Will that help? Damn, this investigation this is a long one. Pay me a glass and I'll be gent. Pay me a bottle. Where's the mailbox? And what the flowers? Apparently it's somewhere around here, but the screen is so damn dark. Where the hell is it? Old road. Probably we shouldn't go there. Check the other side of the road. Oh, I I see it. Uh, there is uh, Petrescu's letter. <clears throat> My dearest, most beloved children, I'm so sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, my children, are still living in a country consumed by war. But there is also a war going on here in England. War against poverty and against injustice. There is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years. This is why I am uh, writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You are grown up now and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must make now, to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me. And remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I'm as ever your loving father, Darius. Why tore this up? The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to incite him to let me in. Who are you? Good evening, Christian. Shame. Oh. Goodbye. You are blinded by your own You wanna fight me? No. I should never oh. have taken up my father's business. Okay. Can I make him invite me in? Not like we need this. We can just always intimidate him. Mr. Petrescu, just one minute, please. You again. Go away. Mesmerize level 2 required. How do you level that up? Let's have a man-to-man -man talk. Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man-to-man, -man, you and I? <laughs> Alright. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see Dorothea. 
Don't make me regret this, though. Sure. The district is in a bad spot. I need to buy some... It's locked. Parts. I guess I need to kill the guy. To gain access to his safe. Get inside now. Hey, look at me. Let's take their stuff. So, are these people turned away from the Pembroke Hospital. I suppose that is the case. Where are you? There are a lot of people in here. Don't mind me, I'm just taking everything. My dear Dorothea, when you read this letter, I will be on the boat that would take Anton and me back to Brasau. England was not for us, and I confess I cannot wait to see again the proud hills of uh, Transylvania. As soon as we are there, I promise I will light a candle in the black church and pray for you to survive this terrible epidemic. I know that you do not agree with this decision and that you are determined to be more useful by helping our comrades exiled in the East End, but Anton cannot wait to return to our beloved country and see our long-awaited re revolution bloom. He is my husband, and I will stay by his side. <clears throat> I know we had our arguments and our fights. I know you would have wanted me to stand by your side and help you manage this clinic of yours, but now that I'm leaving England, be assured that if anything would happen to you, if you ever were in great trouble or danger, I would come back immediately to London, with or without Anton. Please think of me as much as I think of you. I'm your affectionate sister, Theodora. Okay. Hey, Dorothy. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vassily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. No. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Anything else? Thank you, nurse. Anything else I should know? He did lose consciousness this morning, but he's never had convulsions like these. He's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel! Hand me that scalpel! What can I do, Doctor? I must perform a... a truckist. <laughs> I know that word, but I can't pronounce it. Tracheostomy? He didn't even say it! I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy. Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. What would you suggest? 
Right then, that's Crane. What do you suggest we do? I've no idea. I'm not the doctor. Time is of the essence. We need to perform a thoracic drain. Yes, doctor. Damn. Your eyes kind of a dead He's giveaway. He's still bleeding, Doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. Uh-oh. I must suture the artery. I must. First, suture the artery. Find the wound. I'm not too sure about the finishing below. Of the blood. Needle and thread, Doctor. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor. F and F friend now. Oh. Let's do cardiac massage. Cardiac massage, now. Cardiac... what? Are you making this up as you go along? Yes! Happy was the right call. I should have started with the Epi. Then the cardiac massage. We've lost the pulse. He, he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions. Something... primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. I doubt you're here to test my bedside manners. Yeah, we gotta talk. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I've come to stop the blackmail? I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. <clears throat> if you keep doing it... Why not trust Dr. Swansea? Dr. Swansea is a sensible and honest man. He wouldn't have refused your friend's care at Pembroke. It's easy for you to say, Doctor. These people cannot go to the police, nor to the hospital. They don't even speak English. They depend on me for everything. Why target Lady Ashbury? But why Lady Ashbury? Why her, of all people? She's pristine and proper, all right. But that she-wolf in sheep's clothing murders the poor for sport. I have her where she belongs, and I'll milk her for all she's got. So, the end justifies the means. Is that your defense? I know you're kind, Doctor. Just another fine-heeled, silver-spooned gentleman who was given the world on a platter. You know nothing of poverty. Nothing of the shame, the hunger, the loneliness. That's actually a very good point.
not necessarily that I don't know anything about that, but uh, those who are never in that situation to be desperate enough to do like yeah, if you if you are like if you're like in a desperate situation like like stealing, blackmailing, whatever like like anything to survive, I suppose. Is uh, not too surprising. I don't know. Still, would have. So she didn't trust Wancy. They may have turned them away. Like she's right about that. Ashbury. Like I don't really like the the fact that she tries to justify her actions <laughs> by uh, making. By saying that Lady Ashbury is 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 bad, but I, that's actually that's exactly what I'm doing as well. So, damn. And I, I could see why uh, you might think that the unjustified means like ultimately let let just see what happened. She uh, blackmails Lady Ashbury. She gets money. She steals from a hospital, and then. She treats people who would probably not get treated, and um, and that's it. So it's not it's not that bad, but the blackmail must stop. Like the the way I see it, like if she keeps doing this, at very least she puts. Her own people, at very least, her, he, she puts her own people over the ones in the hospital. So, and also she is running a pretty terrible place. She's not running a hospital. Like, honestly, honestly, she would have been a lot better off uh, blackmailing Lady Ashbury. Then giving the money to the people, uh, the migrants, then sending them to the hospital where they would have spent the money, and uh, of course, like, though in a way, like, that money wouldn't be completely wasted. Oh, we can go back. In a way, that money wouldn't be completely wasted. So I don't know. Like, okay, I'm. I'm still justifying it, but still. Like, she obviously is not running a, a, an operation that's, like, in any way <clears throat> uh, capable of dealing with uh, what she would need to deal with. She didn't even know how to handle the situation that <laughs> I didn't even know how to handle. I think I, I should have went for the epi. Isn't that how it goes? When your heart stops, it goes like epi? Then heart massage uh, till the heart restarts. So that, that's why I was confused. Like, like if is if his uh, pulse was slowing, then you don't really go for the happy shot, do you? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. The blackmail must stop. Yeah, you know, I I, I sympathize with you, but this is not ideal. You see this. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Spare, I will look away, but you resign. Charm, you will forget all about this. Embrace, I'm ending this right now. I was... I was told to not kill. I was told to fix it. You will forget all about this. But is that really a solution? I mean, like, that seems pretty much a cheat, cheat way out. But, like, is that really a, a good solution? <clears throat> she needs to resign. I think, like, this would be more real solution. Like, you have to resign or I murder you. 
I'm not sure I want to do that. I think this is more of a, the real solution, but like making her forget about all of this. Let's try it. Listen very carefully, Dorothy. You will erase from your memory everything you pretend to know about Lady Ashbury and Pembroke Hospital. Let that rich bitch off the hook over my dead Nurse body. Nurse Crane, enough. Listen as if your life depended on every word. I know you have a generous heart who gives freely to those in need, but you shall walk away from the shadier streets of your business. I will never abandon- Dorothy, the discussion has come to a close. Your clandestine activities in the Resistance are over. Let it go. I'll... I'll let it go. Yes. All Jonathan, gone. how do you know this works? Uh, new citizens available to kill. My mesmerize went up. Report to Lady Ashbury. Now we can go back. Whoa, what the hell is going on here? It's one of them! There's one of them! Snack time! Fuck is fast! Filthy piece of shit! Are you guys fighting with someone else? Ooh, that hurt. Hey, mister. It ain't human! Kill it! Okay, I got my stamina back. No! What's going on, man? Let's go for a little heal. No! It's fine! It's next time! Oh boy. Why did I get 600 XP for nothing? When science fails you, this elixir will give you faith again. Maybe we can check out her Good stock. Evening. Maybe she's selling. I'd like to see uh, something that I need. She's not. But she's a merchant, and we can keep that in mind. Two hundred forty meters. It's quite far away. I cannot enter. Really? Jump up. I won't end up another drunk old yeah. litter in the streets. I might just not murder him. Maybe I should just stick to the main road. But that's boring. I wanna run around the alleys. Yeah, Whitechapel is not really in the best spot. Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Kill it, boy! Toby? <clears throat> Crush the leech, boys! <laughs> Snack time again! Oh 
boy, they set me on fire. No, that's not good. Maybe I should take out the weaker ones first. Let's see how he likes a Oh, we gotta kill him. No! How many guys I hate to deal with? Yeah, a lot of people are gonna die. Okay, it's next time again. Finished off. Kobe, you wanna die? Oh, was it the last one? No. Damn. I guess trying to sneak past them is an option as well. But I like killing people. It's really good. It's very satisfying. And I'm somewhat picky about it. So if I find it satisfying, like... It, it's it's definitely at least above average, but yeah, it, it's it's good. And only doing melee so far. Do I go in there? I don't know. Well, I'm also doing abilities, I suppose. And that's it. Or keep out signs. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Pembroke Hospital. The lady is somewhat outside. You here? Oh, medical supplies. Actually, I wanna check one thing. Oh, this guy is apparently selling stuff. Good evening, Milk. Good evening, Doc. That's straight. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. I don't care about guns. Built on shotgun? Wow, that's pretty good. Reload time 15 seconds? But yeah, it's, it's a good gun, I guess. This is not good. Common handle part? I think we need that. <laughs> Common trigger. I'm trying to upgrade my my melee weapon. Milton shotgun. Can we upgrade that? We can upgrade it to level five. Does like a lot of damage. How many bullets? Oh, it, it has two bullets in it. Yeah, that that's that's a good weapon. I guess, I guess like. Common trigger parts. Uh, what about my gear? Like, we have this uh, club. I need more common handle parts to upgrade it to good. Where if we can buy melee weapons? 
Don't you sell melee weapons? Do we have anybody else on the map? Merchant? So we are dealing with one merchant. Oh yeah, we do definitely know about one other merchant. Game. Okay. I don't know if that's a good, good weapon. Evening, Milton. The good club evening, I'm Doctor. using. Still but like, I'd it's like the best weapon so far. Why? Yeah, this is all guns. So this is not gonna be any good for me. I wanna meet the other guy. Who sells relics. He is somewhere around here. Maybe I should restart the game. Thelma Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where are they hiding? Oh, I should investigate. It's my stuff. Yeah, I very much suspect that this guy is not gonna have. Uh, it's what locked, I need. all right. Good evening, Doctor Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Yeah. Okay. Please show Let's me talk. what you have to sell. Of course. It's just trinkets and curios, really. But I'm sure they can be useful. Well, they better be. This is garbage. You think I'm gonna get high? Tomorrow. More bodies will arrive and then sadly depart. I, I can't deal with that. My life is too crazy already. Alright. We need to take talk to Lady Ashbury. Also gotta take a nap. Anyway guys, uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.